Welcome back to Tech Yes City, this is Brian coming to you guys today with a little bit of a different sort of video where I'm building two PCs at the same time for subscribers that requested these builds at cost. And now the good thing about this PC is I get to test the i7-920 versus the E5640 head to head and see if that node shrink really does make a difference. There's also some other things I'll be testing out like ECC memory that's unbuffered and whether you can overclock it or not. So without wasting any more time, let's go over what parts we have here today and how much they cost, and then we'll go over to the cleanse and then the build and the benchmarks. I'm on the Gigabyte UD3R, the X58 version, pretty much the north bridge and the south bridge, the thermal paste there had hardened up, but it was a lot easier to get off than the MSI one. So now we're going to put these two boards back together with some MX4. So anyway, here's the heat sink here. This stuff is like virtually like glue, so I'm going to have to put a sanding block to it and really give it a hammering. Okay, so there it is, nice and shiny and ready to go back on. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly test and see if this BIOS needs to be flashed or not. And uh, if it does, then it's a bit of a pain in the ass on this platform because they want you to flash from Windows because I think the BIOS file is too big. 
So uh, we'll just hit that power switch there and just see if our little E5640 is being recognized. Okay, this actually might be the CPU this time around. I mean, it looks like it's not turning on. All right, so we've put the i7-920 back in and it looks like that was the problem. So maybe the motherboard doesn't support the Xeon CPU and I will find out very soon. So this time around we're going with something different. We're gonna use some ECC memory. Now this is actually unbuffered, which is quite rare for ECC memory. So it still does have an extra chip on here in the middle which allows it to read and write errors if they do show up. However, it does add an extra cycle to the memory, though the good thing about this is we're able to get more memory for the same money. All right, so let's uh, just boot this PC up and see if this stuff works and see if it's being recognized on boot. Okay, that isn't a good sign. So it looks like this motherboard doesn't like ECC memory either, so we're just gonna quickly test this motherboard with the uh, memory from the wash video that was forged from 10 Nokia 3310s. Okay, so we've booted this thing up and we can see here in the information we've got D0 stepping, which is actually a really good thing on the i7-920 because it means we'll be able to hopefully overclock this thing to four gigahertz. And we've got version 2.61 here. So I've just downloaded the latest BIOS version and I'm gonna plug it in and see if we can update the BIOS too. Okay, so we've tried to update the BIOS here with the latest BIOS and it's just not being recognized at all. So if I change that over to here on the focus, we can see that it just will not find the uh, BIOS to update. And this is the official BIOS from MSI's website since it does say version 8B5, but on their website, I can't even find that BIOS. Now managed to rename the BIOS to exactly the BIOS that it was before previously, so it's giving us the option to flash. So hopefully this works this time around, which will be great, yeah. So it looks like it's working, knock on wood. And once it's done with this BIOS flash, we're gonna try the ECC memory again. We're also gonna try an E5-5640. Uh, no, I tell you, this is slow and painful. <laughs> you just don't want it to stop or crash anyway during this. Come on, MSI motherboard, you can make it. You can do it! Yay! Yay! That was the workaround there. We actually just renamed it to the exact same BIOS that was on it before, the one that was being recognized, and now we can see here we're on the uh, March 19th, 2011. So it's a much more recent BIOS. All right, so we just tried the ECC memory and as you can see here, it's working. And I'm kind of a little bit perplexed because I'm, I'm positive that the memory controller is built onto the chips with Nalum. They were the first generation. So what this means is that the i7s, uh, the consumer grade actually supports ECC memory which is cool. So I guess it's a dormant feature that was, uh, I guess, awakened or awoken by a BIOS update. Hmm. Very interesting anyway. So I'm not as sure for the exact reason, but cheap memory is working. Woo! All right, so we're in the BIOS now. We've updated to version FF through the Q flash. I didn't realize that you couldn't update it to the last version because that can only be updated via Windows, I think, because of the fact that the BIOS flash chip doesn't recognize the size of the actual BIOS. So FF was the most recent one that I could update to, and that's good enough because that now recognizes the Xeon, which has the ECC uh, memory compatibility on built on the chip in the memory controller, which means that we can now use the ECC memory, all 12 gigabytes of it. So we are home and hosed and we're good to go.
Alright, so it's finally time to boot both these computers up and we're gonna see if they work both at the same time. So let's get it done. Okay, so who is going to turn on this marvelous Acer monitor from 2008? CCFL backlit too, by the way. They're both working, as we see here. Both these computers have successfully booted up. One on the HDMI, one on the VGA port, because the DVI port on this monitor doesn't work. So there we have it, two amazing PCs. As you can see in the benchmarks, they both ran really well. The one thing I will point out is that there was not much of a difference between the i7-920 and the E5640. If anything, there was absolutely no difference at all when it came to real world performance. Most notably citing here the Cinebench score here where we got 625 points on the 920 and then we got only 621 on the E5640. Now, now this overclock was pretty much apples to apples with both the motherboards sporting a base clock of 200 megahertz. Another thing I will point out and that you guys probably noticed as well was the quite weak scores on the GTX 660. And I noticed that back in the past when I had my GTX 750 Ti overclocked, that thing scored more points than this thing is today. So maybe there is a bit of truth with the Kepler being nerfed. However, I will check that in the future. Though for what it's worth, I do think the old school AMD cards start to offer a lot better value for money than the old school Nvidia cards, especially when it comes down to price performance. And another great thing to take out of this was that the ECC memory is overclockable. It's great value for money. And not only that, when you couple it with that X58 motherboard line and those accompanying 920s and also the E5640s, you can overclock them to four gigahertz and you have yourself one of the most amazing gaming CPUs, especially for the money. And the last thing to take out of this video would be that the old school Intel heatsink fans are actually pretty good. 
unlike nowadays. Anyway, that's about it for me today, guys. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments about today's builds, then be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below. Now, these PCs are really good value for money, though they could have been great value for money if I had used something like a HD7870 or an R9270, in my opinion. Anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts on these PCs, so be sure to hit that comment in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Peace out for now. Bye.